beautiful people. It's Wonderful Wednesday. I'm April Roll, your ER doctor online, and June is National Migraine and Headache Awareness Month. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about common types of headaches. The two most common type of headaches are tension headaches and migraine headaches. With tension headaches, people typically feel a tight sensation of pain and it's bilateral, meaning on both sides of the head. Migraine headaches, typically the person feels a throbbing pain and it's usually on one side of the head. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about migraine headaches simply because I can give both a professional point of view and a personal point of view because I have migraine headaches and I've been getting them since I was about 12 years old. So I'm just going to give a little bit more information about that and also some personal um, symptoms that I've had with my migraine headaches. So as I said before, um, the symptoms of migraine, you can have a throbbing pain that's on one side of the head, but other symptoms do include sensitivity to light and sound, meaning that if you um, are exposed to light, you have more pain, or if you're hearing louder sounds, you have more pain. You can also have nausea and vomiting, and you can also have something called aura. Um, people can have migraine with aura or migraine without aura. And an aura is a symptom or a feeling that you can get before or during your headache and it can affect um, certain things like your vision or include numbness or um, affect your hearing. So with the vision, you can get flashes, seeing dots or specks or seeing zigzaggy lines, seeing colors all the way to having partial loss of vision or you know complete loss of vision with the um, numbness you can get numbness to the face or the mouth or even some fingers on one hand and with hearing you can hear ringing or hear sounds now um, i have migraine with aura and i have experienced um, when I was younger, I used to get the vision um, aura that was a color. I'd see like a bluish, purplish haze coming into my right field of vision and almost kind of like a tunnel vision, but I could still see what was going on. It was just as if I put a um, purple and bluish hazy lens on my vision. Um, and then as I got a little bit older, sometimes the aura would be, um, for vision, I would see kind of like zigzaggy white and black lines or like almost like a kaleidoscope of zigzaggy lines that I see in my vision. And I've even had a little bit of partial loss of vision where, um, kind of like the central area um, of my vision goes blurry and I can't really see what's going on right in this spot. But if I kind of like try to <laughs> move my head around, I can see certain things, but those only last, like I said, for the aura, it lasts a few minutes to an hour. And that the same was true for me. I don't think I've ever had vision aura last longer than like 15, maybe 20 minutes. Um, the numbness, I also have experienced that before. I usually would get the numbness around my lips or tongue. And I've also experienced some numbness on my fingers. But that, again, those things only last maybe like 10 minutes um, at the most. I haven't really gotten any hearing um, aura with my migraines but again like i said um you can get those symptoms with your migraine if you have migraine with aura now two quick things i want to say about migraine with aura the first thing is real serious these aura symptoms can also happen with stroke so if you're obviously if you're having sudden onset of partial blindness 
um, or partial vision loss, or you're getting numbness in your face or numbness in one of your extremities, please immediately seek medical attention. Call 911, go to the ER, whatever the case may be, seek medical attention, especially if this is like the first um, onset that this type of thing is happening to you. The other thing I want to mention is if you are a woman of reproductive age um, and you have migraine with aura, it is not recommended to be on hormonal birth control because birth control in patients with migraine with aura can actually increase your risk of stroke. So you don't want to be on hormonal birth control. Um, if you are on hormonal birth control, which again is not recommended, um, you would um, have to be on aspirin or some type of other medication to decrease your risk of stroke. But again, talk to your neurologist and your OBGYN about that. But um, typically the standard recommendation is women with migraine with aura should not be taking um, hormonal birth control. So that, that's what I want to say about that. Now, back to migraine headaches. So um, you can take for migraine headaches, Tylenol, Motrin, Excedrin, whatever the case may be over the counter, but some people actually have migraines several days out of the month and they have to be on prescription medications. Um, but there is a way that you can kind of prevent or reduce the number of migraines or reduce your risk of getting a migraine if you have migraine headaches. And that is by keeping a headache journal or a headache diary or a headache calendar. Basically, anytime that you get a migraine headache, document what, you, what did you eat, um, you know, were you staying hydrated? Were you stressed out? Did you get enough sleep? Were you um, having a lot to do that day? Did you change up your diet? Um, what was the weather like? Like anything you can think of, okay? And after you start keeping a headache journal or diary, you'll start to notice some patterns where every time XYZ happens, you end up with a migraine. And um, for me, I narrowed it down to three things pretty much. Um, and that is um, if I was not eating well, if I was not staying hydrated, and um, if I was on my menstrual cycle. And a combination of those three big time meant chances are you're gonna get a migraine. Um, lucky for me, when I noticed these patterns and I noticed my aura and things that um, I could actually catch when I was before the headache, I would immediately take ibuprofen because sometimes that would be able to knock it out. I would immediately, if I knew I was dehydrated, I'd drink a lot of water or if I hadn't eaten, I'd hurry up and try to eat something really quick. Sometimes I was too late and um, depending on how dehydrated or how bad my diet was going at the time, I would probably end up with a migraine for that day and sometimes for three days because I'd be behind the ball. But I've gotten really good over time at knowing when I'm gonna get a migraine or just realizing my patterns with my eating habits and drinking water and things like that and staying on top of having a good diet, staying hydrated so that I'm preventing the migraine altogether. Now, another thing that migraines can have is something called a prodrome. And this is a series of symptoms that can happen several hours up to a day before. And there's a bunch of these. So I wanna just list these for you. Um, you can have yawning, feeling depressed, irritability, food cravings, constipation, um, and, and as you can hear, those are pretty vague symptoms. So sometimes people may not even realize that those prodromal symptoms are related to the fact that they're about to get a migraine in a couple hours or tomorrow. You know, so these are really good things to start paying attention to. And this is where the headache 
journal, diary, calendar comes in really handy because you'll start to notice these patterns as I stated before. Another thing is you will notice the stress triggers or not the stress triggers, the headache triggers. And one of those headache triggers is stress. Okay, that's why that's why it came out like that because stress is one of the main triggers. But other things can be hormonal changes, changing in weather, sleeping too much and sleeping too little. You might think obviously not getting enough sleep, but sleeping too much can also be a migraine trigger. And, and that has happened to me before. Um, as I said before, skipping meals or not eating enough, sometimes bright lights or flashing lights, um, drinking alcohol, or also drinking cer certain foods like aged cheese or hot dogs. But as I said, you will start to learn. For instance, um, I was, you know, really trying to get my, um, Eat healthy eating habits underway and I started to realize that um, high protein diets um, make me have migraines so um, I'm still trying to work that out I'm not sure if it is because I'm um, maybe I'm not drinking enough water along with the protein diet or I need to increase that or I need to um, balance out the diet a little more with some healthy fats like um, olive oils and you know omega threes and all that all that kind of stuff, um, but anyway, that's something that I will be working on. But I'm just saying, little things like that you will start to notice about your body, and you will notice, oh, you know, that causes me to have migraine or that causes me to have a headache. I'm not going to do that anymore, or I'm going to avoid that, or I'm going to some way try to have that not happen. So. Um, I hope that you have learned something from this video about tension headaches. Like I said, usually on both sides, feeling like a tight sense of pain and then migraines. I pretty much gave you a whole lot of information about migraine headaches. Um, I hope you learned something from and about those two types of headaches. If you believe you have migraine headaches or tension headaches, please follow up with a neurologist because as I said before, not just stroke, but other um, conditions can cause headaches and can cause some of the symptoms that I mentioned. So you always wanna see a headache specialist, which is a neurologist um, and uh, routinely follow up with your doctor about whatever symptoms you're having. Um, if you have any questions, you can put that in the comment section below. If you have any recommendations about future uh, Wonderful Wednesday topics, please put that in the comment section below. Um, again, thank you for sharing this Wonderful Wednesday with me. Be blessed and stay healthy.